The Irish Confederate Wars, also called the Eleven Years' War, took place in Ireland between 1641 and 1653. It was the Irish theatre of the Wars of the Three Kingdoms, a series of civil wars in the kingdoms of Ireland, England and Scotland. The conflict in Ireland essentially started by pitting the native Irish Catholics against English and Scottish Protestant colonists and their supporters, and ended with Royalists, Irish Catholics and Scottish Presbyterians fighting the ultimate winners, the English Parliament. It was both a religious and an ethnic conflict, fought over who would govern Ireland, whether it would be governed from England which ethnic and religious group would own most of the land, and which religion would predominate in the country. It was the most destructive conflict in Irish history. Overview The war in Ireland began with the rebellion of 1641 in Ulster in October, during which many Scots and English Protestant settlers were killed. The rebellion spread throughout the country and at Kilkenny in 1642 the Association of the Confederate Catholics of Ireland was formed to organise the Catholic war effort. The Confederation was essentially an independent state and was a coalition of all shades of Irish Catholic society, both Gaelic and Old English. The Irish Confederates professed to side with the English Cavaliers during the ensuing civil wars, but mostly fought their own war in defence of the Catholic landed class interests. The Confederates ruled much of Ireland as a de facto sovereign state until 1649, and proclaimed their loyalty to Charles I. From 1641 to 1649, the Confederates fought against Scottish Covenanter and English parliamentarian armies in Ireland. The Confederates, in the context of the English Civil War, were loosely allied with the English Royalists but were divided over whether to send military help to them in the war there. Ultimately, they never sent troops to England, but did send an expedition to help the Scottish Royalists, sparking the Scottish Civil War. The wars produced an extremely fractured array of forces in Ireland. The Protestant forces were split into three main factions as a result of the civil wars in England and Scotland. The Catholic Confederates themselves split on more than one occasion over the issue of whether their first loyalty was to the Catholic religion or to King Charles I. The wars ended in the defeat of the Confederates. They and their English royalist allies were defeated during the Cromwellian conquest of Ireland by the New Model Army under Oliver Cromwell in 1649-53. The wars following the 1641 revolt caused massive loss of life in Ireland, comparable in the country's history only with the Great Famine of the 1840s. The ultimate winner, the English Parliament, arranged for the mass confiscation of land owned by Irish Catholics as punishment for the rebellion and to pay for the war. Although some of this land was returned after 1660 on the restoration of the monarchy in England, the period marked the effective end of the old Catholic landed class. The Plot October 1641 The rebellion was intended to be a swift and mainly bloodless seizure of power in Ireland by a small group of conspirators led by Phelim O'Neill. Small bands of the plotter's kin and dependents were mobilised in Dublin, Wicklow and Ulster to take strategic buildings like Dublin Castle. Since there were only a small number of English soldiers stationed in Ireland, this had a reasonable chance of succeeding. Had it done so, the remaining English garrisons could well have surrendered, leaving Irish Catholics in a position of strength to negotiate their demands for civil reform, religious toleration and Irish self-government. However, the plot was betrayed at the last minute and as a result, the rebellion degenerated into chaotic violence. Following the outbreak of hostilities, the resentment of the native Irish Catholic population against the British Protestant settlers exploded into violence. Shortly after the outbreak of the rebellion, O'Neill issued the proclamation of Dungannon which offered justification for the rising. He claimed that he was acting on the orders of Charles I. 
the rebellion, 1641 to 42. From 1641 to early 1642, the fighting in Ireland was characterized by small bands, raised by local lords or among local people, attacking civilians of opposing ethnic and religious groups. At first, Irish Catholic bands, particularly from Ulster, took the opportunity given them by the collapse of law and order, to settle scores with Protestant settlers who had occupied Irish land in the plantations of Ireland. Initially, the Irish Catholic gentry raised militia forces to try and contain the violence but afterwards, when it was clear that the government in Dublin intended to punish all Catholics for the rebellion participated in the attacks on Protestants and fought English troops sent to put down the rebellion. In areas where British settlers were concentrated, around Cork, Dublin, Carrick, Fergus and Derry, they raised their own militia in self-defence and managed to hold off the rebel forces. All sides displayed extreme cruelty in this phase of the war. Around 4,000 Protestants were massacred and a further 12,000 may have died of privation after being driven from their homes. In one notorious incident, the Protestant inhabitants of Portadown were taken captive and then massacred on the bridge in the town. The settlers responded in kind, as did the government in Dublin, with attacks on the Irish civilian population. Massacres of Catholic civilians occurred at Rathlin Island and elsewhere. The rebels from Ulster defeated her government force at Julianstown, but failed to take nearby Drogheda and were scattered when they advanced on Dublin. By early 1642, there were four main concentrations of rebel forces in Ulster under Phelim O'Neill, in the Pale around Dublin led by Viscount Gorman's town in the southeast, led by the Butler family, in particular Lord Mount Garrett and in the southwest, led by Donna McCarthy, Viscount Muskerry, the Confederates' War, 1642-48. King Charles I sent a large army to Ireland in 1642 to put down the rebellion, as did the Scottish Covenanters. The Scottish army quickly drove the Irish rebels out of Ulster and the English force drove them back from around Dublin. In self-defence, Irish Catholics formed their own government, the Catholic Confederation, with its capital at Kilkenny and raised their own armies. The Confederates also held important port towns at Waterford and Wexford through which they could receive aid from Catholic powers in Europe. The Confederates controlled two-thirds of Ireland and commanded the allegiance of most Irish Catholics, with the enthusiastic support of the Catholic clergy. However, their support was weakest among the Catholic upper classes who were often reluctant to disobey royal authority and who feared losing their own lands if the plantation settlements were overturned. Some of them fought against the Confederation, while others like the Earl of Clan Ricard, stayed neutral. For armed forces, the Confederates had available to them only the militias and lords' private levies, commanded by aristocratic amateurs like Lord Mount Garrett. These were defeated in a series of encounters with English and Scottish troops at Liscarroll, Kilrush, New Ross and Glen McQuinn. However, they were saved from defeat by the outbreak of the English Civil War. Most of the English troops in Ireland were recalled to fight on the Royalist side in the Civil War. In mid-1642 Charles signed the Adventurers Acts into law, whereby loans raised in London would eventually be paid off by the sale of Irish rebels' lands. This gave an extra impetus for the Confederate armies to succeed. But the Confederates also took advantage of Charles's weakening position in England after 1643 to try to negotiate with him. The Irish Confederates mopped up the remaining garrisons within their territory, leaving only Ulster, Dublin and Cork in Scottish and English hands. Garrett Barry, a returned Irish mercenary soldier, took Limerick in 1642, while the townspeople of Galway forced the surrender of the English garrison there in 1643. The remaining British forces were disunited by the events in England. 
The garrison of Cork, commanded by Murrah O'Brien, 1st Earl of Inchiquin, sided with the English Parliament, as did the Protestant settler army around Derry, whereas the troops on Ireland's east coast, commanded by Earl of Ormond, sided with the King. The Scottish Covenanter army, based around Carrick Fergus, pursued the agenda of the Edinburgh-based Scottish government. Allied with the English Parliament up to 1647, stalemate this gave the Confederates breathing space they needed to create regular, full-time armies. They supplied these by creating an extensive system of taxation throughout the country, centered on their capital at Kilkenny. They also received modest subsidies of arms and money from France, Spain and the Papacy. The Confederate armies were commanded mainly by professional Irish soldiers such as Thomas Preston and Owen Rowe O'Neill, who had served in the Spanish army in the Eighty Years' War and Thirty Years' War. In total, the Confederates managed to put around 60,000 men into the field in different armies in the course of the war. The Confederates arguably squandered the military opportunity presented to them by the English Civil War to conquer and reorganize all of Ireland. It was not until 1646 that they launched a determined offensive on the Protestant enclaves in Ireland. Between 1642 and 1646, the war in Ireland was dominated by raids and skirmishes. All sides tried to starve their enemies by burning the crops and supplies in their territory. This fighting caused great loss of life, particularly among the civilian population, but saw no significant battles between 1643 and 1646. The Confederates mounted an expedition against the Scots in Ulster in 1644, but failed to capture any significant territory. In the south of the country, the Confederates took some territory around Cork in 1644-45, for example the town of Bandon, constricting the territory held by the English parliamentarian force there, but failed to eliminate in Sheikham's garrison. Their major success of this period was Thomas Preston's siege of Duncannon in January 1645, which took the town from its parliamentarian garrison. However, an attempt by a combined Munster and Leinster force, commanded by Preston and Castle Haven, to follow up this success by besieging Yule ended in failure. Yule was held by a much stronger parliamentarian force than Duncannon and problems of supply and money meant that the Confederate siege broke up. In March 1645, Refugees The opening years of the war saw widespread displacement of civilians, both sides practicing what would now be called ethnic cleansing. In the initial phase of the rebellion in 1641, the vulnerable Protestant settler population fled to walled towns such as Dublin, Cork and Derry for protection. Others fled to England. When Ulster was occupied by Scottish Covenanter troops in 1642, they retaliated for the attacks on settlers by attacks on the Irish Catholic civilian population. As a result, it has been estimated that up to 30,000 people fled Ulster in 1642 to live in Confederate-held territory. Many of them became camp followers of Owen Rowe O'Neill's Ulster Army, living in clan-based groupings called crates and driving their herds of cattle around with the army. Outside of Ulster, the treatment of civilians was less harsh. Although the no man's land in between Confederate and British held territory in Leinster and Munster was repeatedly raided and burned, with the result that it too became depopulated. Victory and defeat for the Confederates however, the stalemate in Ireland was broken in 1646, with the end of the First English Civil War. The Confederates, after their military ousted the Confederate Supreme Council who had signed a peace treaty with the Royalists abandoned further negotiations with the defeated royalists and tried to retake all of Ireland before the English Parliament could launch an invasion of the country. They were bolstered by the arrival in Ireland of the papal nuncio, Rinuccini, who brought with him large amounts of money and arms. 
they managed to capture a parliamentarian stronghold at Bunratty Castle in Claren to smash the Scottish Covenanter army at the Battle of Bengburb, and also take Sligo Town. Late in the year, the Ulster and Leinster Confederate armies under Owen Rowe O'Neill and Thomas Preston laid siege to Dublin, trying to take the city off Ormond's royalist garrison. However Ormond had devastated the land around the capital and the Confederates, unable to supply their troops, had to lift the siege. In hindsight, this was the high tide for the Irish Confederates. Ormond, who said that he preferred English rebels to Irish ones, left Dublin and handed it over to a parliamentarian army sent from England under Michael Jones. Further parliamentarian reinforcements were sent to Cork in Southern Ireland. In 1647, these parliamentarian forces inflicted a shattering series of defeats on the Confederates, ultimately forcing them to join a royalist coalition to try to hold off a parliamentarian invasion. Firstly, in August 1647, Thomas Preston's Leinster army was annihilated at the Battle of Dungan's Hill by Jones' parliamentarian army when it tried to march on Dublin. This was the best trained and best equipped Confederate army and the loss of its manpower and equipment was a body blow to the Confederation. Secondly, the parliamentarians based in Cork devastated the Confederates' territory in Munster, provoking famine among the civilian population. In September, they stormed Cashel, not only taking the town but also massacring its garrison and inhabitants, including several Catholic clerics. When the Irish Munster army brought them to battle at Knocknanaus in November, they too were crushed. Sligo also changed hands again, captured by the Ulster British Settlers' Army. The battles in this phase of the war were exceptionally bloody. In the battles of 1646-47, the losers had up to half of those engaged killed, most commonly in the rout after the battle was decided. In the three largest engagements of 1647, no less than 1% of the Irish male population were killed in battle. This string of defeats forced the Confederates to come to a deal with the Royalists, and to put their troops under their command. Amid factional fighting within their ranks over this deal, the Confederates dissolved their association in 1648 and accepted Ormond as the commander-in-chief of the Royalist coalition in Ireland. In Shikine, the parliamentarian commander in Cork also defected to the Royalists after the arrest of King Charles I. The Confederates were fatally divided over this compromise. Rinaccini, the papal nuncio, threatened to excommunicate anyone who accepted the deal. Particularly galling for him was the alliance with Inchiquin, who had massacred Catholic civilians and clergy in Munster in 1647. There was even a brief period of civil war in 1648 between Owen Rowe O'Neill's Ulster army, as he refused to accept the Royalist alliance and the new Royalist Confederate coalition. O'Neill neglected to secure adequate supplies and was unable to force a change in policy on his former comrades. During this divisive period the Confederates missed a second strategic chance to reorganize while their opponents were engaged in the Second English Civil War, which was lost by their Royalist allies.